each other, but also for the community as well, to show that we are one in the bond of love, and uh, we want to reach our community for the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to welcome you, and uh, just uh, those that may, we, we're going to tape it this morning, and hopefully edit it and be able to put it on YouTube for others to watch down the road. But uh, just thank you so much for coming this morning, and God bless each and every one of you. I'm going to call on Pastor Sid at this time. Just be with us. That all that takes place this morning, we just glorify you. We just ask, Lord, that your presence would be here, that your Holy Spirit would just move in a very special way this morning. That you would touch people as wherever they need to be touched, if it's physical, spiritual, emotional healing. We just ask that you would just touch them this morning. We just ask that everything be done for your glory. In thy precious and holy name we pray. Amen. And I'm going to have Pastor David come. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to see everybody out here in the sunshine. And um, when I was asked to take part in the service and I was talking to Pastor Leonard, he said, I said, is there a scripture reading you need? Because you want me to do it. He says, well, find something on joy. Don't you think the Bible is just full of it? <laughs> oh, yeah. It really is. But I'm going to do a couple of readings here. First one is uh, from Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 1 to 7. And part of this will sound very familiar, because we usually hear it coming around Christmas time as well. But listen to the prophet Isaiah. Nevertheless, there will be no... No more gloom for those who were in darkness. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Italy. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations. By the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of the deep darkness as light dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as, have, as, as people rejoice in the harvest, as warriors rejoice in the dividing the plunder. From the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdened them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in the battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatest of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, established and upholding the justice and righteousness from the time and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And in the New Testament, in the Gospels, I'm just got to enlarge this a bit here. I'll be reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 to 7, and this is the parable of the lost sheep. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners to eat with them. And Jesus told them the parable, Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go and, uh, for the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts on his shoulders, and goes home. Then he calls his attendants and his neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over this one sinner who repents than over the 99 righteous persons who do not repent. So where is their God? Amen. And now our 
uh, worship team will take over from here. I see we have some young ones in the crowd with us. How about before we start, let's sing a little song with them. Maybe they know it, maybe they don't, but I know the rest of us will know it. If you're happy and you know it. Okay, you ready down there, little guys, and everyone else, everyone that's kids at heart? If, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Woo, good job. And then let's just sing. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. That's our show for today. Thank you very much for coming. Have a nice day. All right. Hello, family. It's so nice to all be together in one place. Thank you so much, Pastor Leonard, Pastor Sylvia, for having us. We appreciate being here, appreciate being together. This first song we're going to sing is called The Father's House. And I was thinking this morning, none of us are in our normal church buildings this morning. But we're outside. That's the Father's house. Amen? Amen. That's yeah. the Father's house. And we just get to be together and have a great time in Him today. So let's do that. Let's lay our burdens down and let's have fun, family, shall we? If you want to stand, you're, you're welcome to stand. If, you want to, if you're more comfortable being seated, you can do that. If you want to have a little dance, do that. It's all good. Let's enjoy. Let's enjoy our time together.
In my devotion this morning, there was a scripture that stuck out to me. And this next song speaks of it a little bit. As the first line says, Come all you who are weary, come all you thirsty. And don't we get weary sometimes? Amen. You don't have to you don't have to have much of life or walk around in this world too long to get a little weary. But the scripture that I read this morning spoke so much to me. It was from Jeremiah 31, 25. The Lord says, I fully satisfy the weary soul, and I replenish every languishing and sorrowful person. So that's good news, amen. If, if we're here today and we're weary, if we are languishing and sorrowful, he says he will replenish us. Just being in his presence and just enjoying fellowship in his presence together and allowing him to just minister to us. It doesn't get any more complicated than that. It's just he's a good father. Amen. Amen.
at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting. God so loved the world. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.
next song. Anybody have any mountains or obstacles in their, their lives? I'm the only one. I'm the only one with obstacles. Oh, okay. Well, pray for me. No, you not. <laughs> this next song called Speak to the Mountains.
Gene, you take it away on these last couple of songs. You got anything on your heart about them? Jeannie's confessing she played in the wrong key because she forgot to hit the transpose I'm new at this, button. Shannon, and I'm so sorry. God love her. all the time, Jeannie. Don't worry about it. Jeannie's been playing literally for a few weeks. Two days. Both. Both. That's it. <laughs> Two days. So no. give her a hand for coming out and, and doing this out like this. I that forgot takes to a lot hit the transpose button. Too. Thank you. That's all right. Thank you very much. <laughs> but I got it at the last part. Nothing like doing that live. We ended well. But yes, we all's well, well that ends well. well. Can everybody repeat that? I thought we came up a notch well. at the end. That's good, Jeannie. Okay, I'm happy to like, announce there's no keyboard in this yeah. next song. <laughs> I'm like, why didn't that sound right? There's something. Okay. No, I just well, want to... <laughs> at least you knew it didn't sound right. Yeah, it's I'm the like, musicians that don't know that it doesn't yeah. sound right. Right, Eldon? You, you can work with the uh, ones that know you. there's something off. Well, yeah. I didn't notice it, so that tells a lot. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, just worship with us some more here. We're going to sing about our good, good father.
think that uh, hopefully you know your love today, folks, by a father, a heavenly father, cares for you. Yeah. He knows how many hairs are on your head. Yeah. Like, that's serious. Like, he knows you. <laughs> hey, Elvin, what are you done? Amen. <laughs> and I just...
good. He's a good guy. Thank you so much. He showed up. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. He did, thankfully. All right, I got a mic here to hand off to somebody, Pastor Leonard. <laughs> awesome. Praise the Lord. He's alive. Amen. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. How's your lungs this morning? Ready to praise the Lord? I hope so. That was awesome. Thank you so much. Um, just got a few announcements. After the service, don't run home to cook. We got hamburgers, chicken burgers. We got dessert. Coffee and tea will be brought out. There's cold drinks. So we'll just have some time of fellowship. You don't have to go home and worry about that. Also, if you need the facilities, you can go downstairs in the basement to go to the washroom, or you can go around the hall and use that one there. And if all else fails, there's the house over here, the outhouse. So, um, but I would prefer the other two. <laughs> so I just want to thank you so much for coming again, as I already mentioned. Also, you might want to, on this one table there, there's some free Bibles and some free books. So I'm going to... Judy does these Bibles up and she does certain topics and people pick them up and there's wonderful testimonies that are coming back through and maybe she'll share a little bit of that when she comes up to speak but um, they're there, they're available, they're free and they're there to bless you and if you think it will bless somebody else that'd be awesome as well so we just want to, to do that so at this time Jeannie is going to do a special number for us say that Judy's very talented. I've seen some of her work. I'm just saying. Thank you for what you do for the Lord. So right around Easter, I was a part of a right. This is an original song I'm going to sing for you that hasn't been released yet, but it will be. So you're getting a taste of a new song before the world does. <laughs> but anyway, these guys are so awesome. Shannon and Ken, I told them about it one day and I'm like, could you guys just kind of come over here and listen to this song? I wrote an original song that I did with some other writers. And if it wasn't for this song, we wouldn't be here. We would just be taking up space at another gathering. Like, like this is important, like why we're here as part of the church and people. That's why we worship him, because he's alive. <laughs>
myself. Thank you, Jeannie. And team. Yes, definitely a team. <laughs> I want to take a minute, too. I want to thank everybody for uh, helping out. Um, I don't want to mention names because then I'm going to miss somebody, but I want to thank everybody that's helped behind the scenes, you know, with everything. And, and there's a lot of stuff we don't see, but we appreciate everyone for your willingness to um, help out and make this day a success. And praise the Lord that it's today. Remember yesterday it started to rain. So we praise the Lord for sunny skies and the cloud every once in a while to cool you down. And so I'm just going to call on Judy. And uh, Judy's going to share this morning. And um, yes, please do escort her up those. Uh, it's not bad going up, coming down. You just might fall. Can we give the worship team a great hand? We do serve a good, good Father, amen, and just uh, the goodness of God is so awesome. And so we just uh, thank um, Judy for agreeing to uh, share this morning as well. And um, Praise the Lord. Amen. What is it about praising the Lord outside in His creation? Amen? Amen. God is good. All the time. I just want to share just a little bit of my testimony this morning and thank my church family for extending me grace as they listen to it again. God is so good. So I want to just read to you from Psalm 100 this morning. It says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. We did that this morning. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. Amen. Amen. How many of us would say this morning, I love to make a joyful noise to the Lord. I serve him in gladness. I come into his presence with singing. I enter his gates with praise and thanksgiving. I give thanks and bless his name. How many of us this morning can, can de declare the Lord is good? His steadfast love endures forever. He's been faithful to me. Can we say amen to that this morning? Amen. Even when we're walking through the storm, when we have trials, James 1, 2 to 4 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And in 2005, I became sick. I had pain in my abdomen, went to the doctor, had tests done, and one particular day went into eMERGE because the pain was so bad that I was doubled over. And the doctor at eMERGE would say, have you had an ultrasound? To which I replied, no. And so he would order one. 
And the Thursday between Christmas and New Year's, my family doctor would call me with the results. They found masses growing. On my ovaries, my blood work was not good. They were diagnosing me with ovarian cancer and I would be heading to Kingston Cancer Clinic to the best oncologist that she knew. I got off the phone, told my family what the results were and declared in that moment that I'm gonna beat this. Do you know your words hold power? Life and death is in the tongue. We speak either blessing or cursing, and I had three children who needed their mom. I went to Kingston, they performed biopsies, they did more blood work, they did CAT scans and other tests, and all came back positive for cancer. They would operate and discover that the masses were actually growing inside the ovaries, that was miracle number one, that they hadn't burst, and I would need six months of chemo and 25 treatments of radiation five days a week for five weeks after the chemo. During this time, I began to search the Word of God about healing. I bought a new Bible, marked every verse pertaining to healing that I could find. And daily, I declared the Word of God over myself regarding healing. One of the first verses that God would give me would be Psalm 118, 17. I shall not die but live and tell what the Lord has done. And I literally stood on that verse. I declare I was fearfully and wonderfully made, made in the image of God, in his likeness. I declare in absolute faith, Father, it says in Isaiah 53, 5, you were pierced for my transgressions. You were crushed for my iniquities, and upon you was the chastisement that brought me peace. And by your wounds, I am healed. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 30 says, I will restore health to you, and your wounds I will heal, declares the Lord. Zephaniah 3.17 says, The Lord God is in your midst, a mighty one, who will save. He will rejoice over you. With gladness, he will quiet you by his love. If God's word promised it, then I believed it. I accepted it. I declared it and claimed it. I proclaimed it. I prayed it. I lived it. I slept it. And I ate it. I took him literally at his word. And my faith grew no matter what the blood work said. The Word of God was and is life to me. And that's one of the reasons that I do the Bibles marked on different topics. Help yourself. They're free. There's never a charge for them. Take one, take two, take three, whatever it is that you want or you feel you need. His Word says He's given me authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm me. Matthew 17, 20, If I have faith as small as a mustard seed, I can say to the mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. And then go back to Mark 11:24. Therefore I say to you, Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. And let me tell you, I prayed in faith, believing. During this time, God showed me many things. He showed me how precious I am, and how his thoughts toward me, and how they are more numerous than the sands. He would ease every anxious thought and surround me with his peace. He would reassure me in my human thinking and ways that he was in control and I didn't have to worry. At the end of chemo and radiation, I would go back yearly for seven years. At the end of the seven year mark, the oncologist said, you are what we call declared cured. But I knew I knew that God had healed me. He said to me that day, Jude, do you realize the amount of cancer that you had 
at the end of the seven year mark, I see those same ladies back in my office with more cancer. He said to me, you are a walking miracle. And that was 19 years ago. Praise God. Jesus healed me and during that difficult trial, I learned who God is. He is my fortress. He's my strong tower, my steadfast love, my father. He's my deliverer. He is my covering. He is the one who hears me when I call. When I cry out to him, he hears me and has compassion on me. He's my savior, the king of kings, and he's the Lord of lords. Almighty God, he is all powerful. He's majestic. He's the God of the impossible. He's my strength and my laughter my joy, he's my hope, and he's my rock. He's my today, and he's my tomorrow. He's the everlasting father, the prince of peace. He's wonderful counselor. He was and is and is to come, amen. He is literally my everything. And on February 6, 2016, he would be my comforter. When two officers would deliver the news to my husband and I that our oldest son had passed away in the early morning hours, our lives would face a brand new trial. We would journey down the hallway of grief and I would once again discover that Jesus is indeed my everything. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He never abandons us. And over the course of the weeks after our son passed, I would declare my God does all things well. After about a year and a half, I would reach a door to which I would swing wide open and walk in ready again to embrace joy. Were there dark days? Yeah. But God would see me through because my God is the God of restoration. He restored my joy out of the darkest circumstances. Aren't you glad he restores this morning? He renews us. He rebuilds us. He reestablishes our footsteps. Not one detail of us is hidden from him. God is big enough to trust. I can place everything at his feet and know that he's got everything under control. You can trust him this morning. Life isn't perfect. Life throws us curveballs. There's bumps on the road, but we serve a God who can. Can I encourage you this morning to put your faith afresh in him? Be anxious for nothing. Read and meditate on his word. Dress yourself in his armor. Pray without ceasing. Declare his word and worship him. Worship will literally change the atmosphere where you are. Worship him. When we worship, it takes our eyes off of our situation and puts them on the king of kings. Many days during my journey through cancer and loss, I worshiped him. I soaked in his presence. Turn your eyes upon Jesus this morning. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Your God this morning does all things well. His word says, fear not. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you, for I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's good news this morning, right? Give him praise this morning because he is worthy.
on the worship team. Thank you, Judy, for that word this morning. And uh, all glory to God, amen? All glory amen. to God. Check, check, check. I'm back. Okay. That was so good, Judy. I love how the Lord works through all of us. We didn't get together to know what your message was, Judy, but I can't help but think that this song is definitely your song. And it's a song for a lot of us. It's called Rescue Story. Maybe you're going through something like Judy has gone through and, and gotten the victory, or maybe you're in that, that grief that overwhelming grief that I cannot imagine. But we can declare by faith that he's our rescue story, even if we don't have the victory yet. But we can declare that and speak that out by faith, amen, that he is our rescue story.
And let's just celebrate together with this last song today. And I think the burgers are probably just about ready and the hot dogs. So we can just enjoy a wonderful time of fellowship together.
been such a pleasure to worship with you today. Thank you again for having us. Awesome. Amen. Thank you, guys. Hey, Thank man, you. that was great. Thank you for the sound. Thank you for the sound, guys. Awesome. Thank you so much. Again, just a thank you to everybody. We're just going to uh, pray and ask the Lord to bless our fellowship and our food. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this beautiful day you've given to us. We thank you for this beautiful time that we've been able to sh share with other brothers and sisters in our community. And Lord, as we go into the food, we want to thank you for the food and thank you for the fellowship. Bless it to our youth, strengthen our bodies, and unify your body in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless everybody that was involved. God bless you.